All right, guys, now that we have our dude on the screen, what we can do now is actually start setting up that level. And one of the very first things that I want to do is I actually want to go ahead and start animating this guy because right now he's pretty much just a still image. I want to actually build the animation so it looks like he's actually being affected by the firing of the gun. So anyways, let's hop over to shooter scene dot swift where it's pretty much the brains behind that level and right now we have zero methods nothing going on so the first thing I actually want to do is just call did move to view and this is just an override method that gets called whenever the view is first presented so whenever the user first loads this level this code is going to be called now all I want to do in here is call a method called initialize shooter scene now it's going to give me an error because we didn't build it yet and what this is just going to do is i'm just going to make a method to set up everything for this level and uh one of the very first things like i said is actually building that animation so it scene it's not going to take any parameters right now and all right so what do we want to do in this level well the very first thing we want to do is we want to make a variable called score and this is just so later on we can keep track of how many balls he hit or enemies he destroyed whatever you want to call it and another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add an enemy count and this is just so whenever we first load our level balls are gonna start dropping from the ceiling or the roof whatever you want to call it and we're gonna start shooting them and we need to tell our phone how many we want to create how many enemies do you want to have well we just don't want them to go on forever so we'll say um, have 10 so ideally 10 out of 10 would be the perfect score you can have an infinite amount in like a time limit if you want but I'm just gonna have 10 keep things simple so after this I'm gonna add a one more variable and it's gonna call be called shooter animation so again, what this is going to be is pretty much just a list of images. Since that's really all an animation is, just a bunch of different images put together one after another. And since they're slightly different, it looks like movement. So if I call SK Texture, we can go ahead and store where are all of these images in here. Now I'll show you guys a really cool way to do this. So in init shooter scene, let me just go ahead and put let shooter atlas sk texture atlas. And what do you want the name of this to be named? Why does it capitalize crap when I don't want it to? All right, so this is a reference to an atlas named Shooter. Now, remember that I told you guys, an atlas is pretty much just a special type of folder, and it's just special to Xcode. And whenever you call it atlas, it knows that the items inside it are related somehow. So this right here is pretty much a reference to this folder. That's it, nothing that complicated. So what I'm gonna do to create this animation is this. I'm gonna loop through all of the images in this folder and I'm gonna say for each of these images take these and add them to this animation however I'm gonna do it a really cool way I can just go ahead and create one two three four five six different lines of code but what if we wanted to add um, another image to the animation later well I'll show you guys a really awesome way so if you write for index in one so it's gonna start at one and that brings me to another point. Whenever you're making animations, make sure you name them in this way. This is the easiest way, right? Whatever name, shooter, enemy, block, and then a number after it in order. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if you have 10, or let's say you have like 25 frames in this animation, make sure the first one isn't named one. Make sure it's zero one. If you have a three digit, maybe you have like, 150 frames make sure the first one is zero zero one so you know what i'm saying just don't have it one 
Well, you guys probably know what I'm saying. All right, so for here, we wanna go from one to six, but we just don't wanna write six. Instead, we can write shooter, Alice, and it's not auto-completing, texture, names, dot, count. So this is pretty much just gonna count how many textures or how many images are in this folder for you. So you just don't have to write any hard-coded value right here, it gets it for you. So from here, what we need is first, just a reference to the image name, the file name, and that is just string, in the format of this is shooter percent 01d and again this 01d means one decimal place if i had like a 14 or anywhere from like 10 to 99 then i would need 02 or if i named this like um shooter 001 then i would have 03 it's just how many decimal places naming convention and for the arguments is just index did I get it always gives me that extra symbol and it's ticked me off all right so this is pretty much the image name and in other words it's a reference to the file and once we have a reference to each file one by one we can add them to the animation how do we do that well we take that animation which is going to be a list of all the images and for each one we are going to add shooter atlas dot texture named image name and that is it so it should be good to go so right now if you run it we shouldn't see a whole lot going on because we actually just created the animation right now so we said how we want it to be organized, but we didn't say to play it um, for any duration or when we want to play it or anything like that. So we can click and nothing's happening because we didn't do that yet. Again, to recap one last time, we just built an animation with just a list of images. And then we said, okay, how many images do we want to add? We'll just get the number of images in this atlas, in this folder, and then loop through one by one and for each image, add it to the animation. And now I'm gonna show you guys how to actually play the animation.